I O go H I O go H I O go Buckeyes. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest edition of the Buckeye Broadcast with yours truly, E. Emmett Brady. It is week 11. Things are heating up. We are in go time, ladies and gentlemen. This week we are taking on, actually today we are taking on the Michigan State Spartans. That's right, one of the secondary rivalries for the Bucks here in the Big Ten Conference. And um, everything is looking pretty peachy keen. We have moved up in the polls. We're still undefeated. Coach Urban Meyer has the guys ready, firing on all pistons. Uh, real quickly on this Buckeye broadcast, we're going to take a look at last week's victory over Illinois. And uh, some predictions and analysis here for today's game. Big game against the Spartans. This is turning into an annual game as big as the Ohio State-Michigan game. Well, nothing's as big as the Ohio State-Michigan game, right? And um, the Dame of Fitness subject for today, we're going to talk about oxygenation. What does it mean when you get up and move? When you exercise, when you dance, when you sing? How does it connect with not only making healthier muscles, but a healthier circulatory system as well, it helps clean your blood when you exercise. We're going to talk about that on today's Buckeye broadcast. And um, I was looking at the polls really briefly here. You know, the good news is that the AP finally got the marketing engine of Alabama back in their rightful place of number three in the top ten. They had bumped up to number two for a while there, but uh, I'm not ever quite sure how undefeated teams don't make it into the top five. The great news, the exciting news here as there are two Big Ten teams that are undefeated. Iowa, the Hawkeyes, playing some ball this year. Pretty impressive. And the uh, Oklahoma State Cowboys from the Big 12 are also undefeated. But they are filling out the top 10. Of course, number one right now is Clemson. I picked them early in the season. They look real good. But um, the uh, I think the Cowboys from Oklahoma State should be number three over Alabama. But Nick Saban and that whole Crimson Tide, mar- Crimson Tide marketing machine is pretty powerful, you know. But um, the Buckeyes are indeed number two. They seem to be coasting through some of their games. Last week was one of those games where nobody really thought they were going to lose against Illinois necessarily, but everybody was curious how they were going to win. And um, for those of you who've been following the broadcast and my live Facebook streams during the games, you might have noticed that I was uh, on the road. I was going to a big science conference up in Minneapolis last week, so I was actually watching the game in between airport stops. It never seemed out of control. You know, um, they did win 28-3. Win to three. Um, But once again, the big concern for the Buckeyes. You know, JT Barrett came back after suspension. The offense just looked sluggish to get started. Now, of course, we have who the the who might be the Doak Award winner for best running back in the country this year. He's certainly in the top three, probably for Heisman candidates as well. But uh, the Mr. Consistency, the Mad Zeke, Ezekiel Elliott, pretty much owned the day on both sides of the ball, both offenses. He was the best player. Uh, Zeke ran up 181 yards, two touchdowns. But really, it was his first and second down runs that made the difference because it allowed the offense to compensate for a rather underwhelming performance by the passing game. Um, You know, Barrett looked all right, 150 yards passing, 74 running. So, you know, a balanced game. You know, they only scored four touchdowns. They probably could have scored another four if they had been on fire, but they weren't. Um, And, you know, before anybody gets too up in arms about the Ohio State offense, just remember they are dealing with a new offensive coordinator. Last year it was a well-oiled machine. This year there seems to be some issues with – the calls on important third down plays. Um, and, you know, I got to say, got to point right to the right to the top. Coach Meyer, um, some of the decisions they make and the execution on the third and five, the third and sevens, you know, they just can't pull the trigger. Even though they have all so many, so many offensive weapons. And, um, you know, of course, you know, when you have a running back as good as Ezekiel Elliott, you have some cushion because at any given time he can break a long run but more importantly he's a second half runner and this is where when we talk about the Michigan State game this is where it's really going to make a difference um Ohio State defense absolutely showed up. They are definitely one of the top 10 in the country. They crushed the uh Illini rushing game. They only had 20 yards. And um Wes Lunt's a good quarterback for Illinois. He had a pretty good day, 24 of 37 for 241. Um, but, uh, you know, you're not going to do anything if you can't run the ball in the Big Ten. 
And um, Illinois had a couple of chances to score. I think they missed a field goal. They banged a field goal um, off the uprights early. But, um, you know, I think the defense is pretty much in the best mode they can be in. You know, people have argued if they're the best defense in the country, they're certainly one of them. Other people are saying Michigan is the best uh, defense in the Big Ten. We will find out because uh, Michigan has certainly fumbled the ball, and I mean metaphorically dropped the ball against a couple of uh, pretty good offensive teams early in the season. I think that loss to Utah really knocked the Wolverines off their horse. Uh, And then, of course, that uh, (laughs) the epic meltdown, dude, against the uh, the st- Michigan State, today's adversaries, the Spartans on that last-minute punt, probably one of the most messed-up WTF endings to any football game ever, any sports game ever, period, you know. So, again, last week's game, not a big sweat. Um, Illinois never has really, uh, hasn't really had a good football team in, in quite a while. And, um, you know, when the defense can crush an offense that well, it, it was a balanced uh, defense, you know. The front four looked good. Um, but really, you know, I think uh, the linebackers are going to be put to the test a little bit more today because Michigan State has uh, a great passing game. But we'll talk about that in just a minute. So um, I was out and about last night. I was doing some Dama fitness for myself. Uh, I did a workout in the afternoon, and then I went out and uh, did some performance dancing. And as I was doing it, I realized something that I do uh, naturally now as part of the Dama Fitness System when I'm working out. It's something that uh, you know a lot of athletes do on the sidelines. I've seen some of the Ohio State players do it. When they uh, come off the field, they'll go to a bike. And they'll start. Uh, they'll keep uh, their legs moving throughout uh, their time sitting on the sidelines, uh, especially in cooler weather. And uh, you know, everybody knows this is to keep the heart pumping. But but what exactly does it do inside the body when you uh, oxygenate the body? Now, there's different levels of doing this. Of course, you can simply do this with breathing. But the most effective way is aerobic exercise. That means you burn oxygen when you work out. And uh, I was thinking in my my mind last night. I was thinking that uh, part of the DEMA magic is being able to oxygenate the body completely through fully accessing uh, all kinds of movement and um, in different types of rhythms as well. So essentially what happens inside the body, one of the things that I do when I'm performing is I will often do pull-ups or push-ups, uh, squats, I'll do leg lifts, things like that, you know, that are off off stage on the side. And occasionally people think that I'm just showing off when I do that. But in fact, what happens is when you pump different parts of the body, when you do a push-up, for instance, you're drawing the blood to different elements in different parts of, you know, different limbs. I mean, that's obvious, right? But what's going on inside? Well, in addition to delivering more oxygen to more parts of the body, uh, it, you know, increases the heart rate and it makes basically more efficient... Uh, flow for your circulatory system. But there's also this thing called lymph. And if you've never heard of your lymph nodes, when you get sick, you get a sore throat and your throat swells up and gets puffy. That's swollen lymph nodes. You've got over 100 lymph nodes all throughout your body, uh, in your armpits, your neck, your chest, your fingertips, the back of your knees, uh, and your groin area. And lymph is a very, very important fluid inside the body. So everybody knows what arteries and veins are, I'm sure. And uh, at the end of those arteries and veins, you have things called capillaries. And capillaries are where oxygenated red blood cells transfer uh, the oxygen over to the tissues and the cells themselves. But the interesting part is that red blood cells are too big to fit through capillaries. So what does the job? Well, it's the lymph fluid, the lymphatic fluid, and it's a clear, colorless fluid. Um, it's, it's less dense than blood, uh, and it can pass through the capillaries, capillaries and it uh, saturates the cells and the tissues. And this is where the minerals, the ions, uh, the minerals, the vitamins, um, different type of oxygen, of course, gets transferred from you know, the main circulatory system into the body. Now, what's another interesting thing about it is that the lymph nodes, which are little like processing stations, we'll call them bus stations for all these things, um, they are glands. They're like sponges. And this lymph fluid moves in and out of uh, your cells and your tissues 
through movement. Now, that just doesn't mean exercise. It could be massage. It can be um, doing hot, cold uh, bath, uh, alternative, uh, you know, hot pool and cold pool type thing. Um, it can be inversions where you do a handstand or a headstand and the lymph flows in a different direction because the, uh, the lymph nodes are omnidirectional. In other words, you have to actively move or change direction. You can even activate your lymph nodes by by spinning in, in place, kind of like a whirling dervish. You do that one direction five or 10 times, and then you spin in another direction five or 10 times, and this can activate the lymph activity as well. But if you don't do anything, and here's the other part of the problem, if you sit on your butt and you sit in front of a computer or a television and you're not an active person, the lymph nodes are basically sort of the rallying points for your white blood cells. Now, these, of course, are the defense mechanisms of the human body as well. And after a while, if these lymph nodes go stagnant or lazy, they can actually start to get a little clogged and they get hard and sore. A lot of times people get diagnosed with weird illnesses and ailments when in fact it just needs to flush out their lymphatic system. The best way to do this, number one for sure, is aerobic exercise. Stretching helps as well. Self-massage, non-sexual self-massage is important just to work out your limbs. And of course, hiring a professional massage therapist can help as well. But my point is that as part of your Dama Fitness system, and as you're a big Buckeyes fan, you want to focus on not only being the best fan, but the healthiest fan in the country, add a little bit of both movement and self-massage to your weekly schedule and uh, focus on your armpits, your neck, you know, your hip area, these in your chest. These are areas that really have the most lymph nodes and the ones that get the least attention in our modern lifestyle. So when I talk about oxygenation, it's not just about getting oxygen to the tissues. It's also about cleaning them out and getting all that lymphatic fluid processed and, and circulated back through the body. Because remember, you have about five quarts of red blood in your body and uh, you have three quarts of lymphatic fluid. So it's the same lymph that goes around the entire body. It's very, very evenly distributed, but you have to move it around. It's got, you got to be active. You got to take your own personal initiative to get your lymph cleaned out. And that's something that we just don't talk about enough in our society. So that's the little tidbit for the Dame of Fitness here today. So what does it have to do with the Michigan State Spartans? We're going to hit them so hard, we are going to squash their lymph nodes. How's that sound? Uh, no, we are coming out big time because really what today's game is all about, it is the Buckeyes defense versus the Michigan State offense. Pretty much the consensus is that the, the Michigan State offense is not uh, defense is not going to be able to slow down the Bucks on offense too much. So basically, as far as Ohio State offense goes, it's their game to win. Um, as long as they don't make big mistakes, as long as they don't try too hard, and they control the ball, no turnovers, and they get those third down conversions, I think they should easily be able to put up some pretty decent points against the Spartans. On the other side of the ball, however, and of course, the name you're going to hear all day long for the Spartans is Connor Cook. He is definitely an NFL pro type quarterback. Very efficient on third downs, number nine in the country on third downs. Uh, almost 50% of the time they can convert to the first down. And uh, Ohio State is in the top 20 in third down defense. So that is definitely where the Buckeyes advantage will come in. If the Buckeyes can keep them to third and long early in the game, keep the Spartans off the scoreboard early in the game, I think that's what's going to make the difference. Now, um, the thing is, Connor Cook can thread the needle. He can put the ball into traffic. He can also put it downfield. And he's got the receivers um, uh, in Aaron Burbage, uh, certainly one of the top uh, top outside receivers in the Big Ten this year. Uh, I think he's catching over a thousand yards already, and he can fly once he gets open into into the uh, the open field. But the good news is that I think is. Um, Michigan State, uh, Ohio State's back four, as long as they don't make any big errors, are one of the shutdown um, passing defenses in the country. And this is what Connor Cook is going to be tested. That's probably going to be, uh, for today's game, I think that's where the rubber meets the road. How well can the back four keep Connor Cook into uh, third and long situations. Um, you know, Michigan State's got a good running game, but it's not their strength. It definitely focuses on Connor Cook. Now, on the other side of the ball, there's questions about the Ohio State pass 
blocking. And this is where, uh, this is JT Barrett's game to, to win or lose today because one of the things that is definite is if they get through the line, JT Barrett can scramble. So Coach Meyer, uh, you know, I would imagine, you know, 10 to 20 percent of the plays today should be design draws for JT to make some yardage up the field. If the Buckeyes can keep it where their third down conver- conversions are third and short for most of the game. Uh, and if they can get some points early, this is the biggest problem. Ohio State has started slowly for most of the season. If they can get one or two scores in the first quarter, it's going to put a lot of pressure on Michigan State's defense to beat one, uh, Michigan State's offense to beat one of the best defenses in the land. Um, we don't want to get it close. That's the other thing is I'm not real confident with the Buckeyes special teams game. Punting, not a big problem. Kicking field goal is definitely a concern. So we want to make sure that we go into the fourth quarter with at least a 10 or 14 point lead. And I think that's very doable. So here we go. The big prediction for today's game. Now across the board, see, it seems like, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a gambler. I don't place bets and I'm not a bookie, but I've been watching the spreads and, um, I have been uh, burned a little bit uh, by the point spread by the Bucks, uh, you know, as far as how many points they've scored. But I'll have you know that I'm uh, on a seasonal ca- a tally. I'm pretty accurate with my picks so far. Um, last week, uh, I, the Bucks, of course, won 28 to three, and that was only one point off the point spread that I picked. Uh, and this week, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna hedge to the lower side. I'm going to say the Bucks are going to score less, but they're also going to keep the Spartans from scoring a lot too. So at the end of the day, as long as there's no big turnovers and JT Barrett, man- JT Barrett manages the offense well, they get scores early in the first half uh, and the defense just does what the Buckeyes D does. I think it's going to be a 31 to 20 victory for the Buckeyes. They're going to go into next week's monster matchup against Michigan undefeated staying at number two in the country. So there you have it. And um, look forward to connecting with you more. One quick announcement, the uh, the special live webcast from the Blue Canyon restaurant uh, because of a scheduling conflict uh, will not take place at the Blue Canyon, but I will be live someplace here in Northeast Ohio. And I'll make the announcement uh, sometime a little bit later in the day or in the game uh, sometime in the week. You can keep an eye out. But uh, for everybody out there, all you scarlet and grays tried and true hate and maize and blue next week is the michigan game so but don't look ahead too far let's go bucks against the spartans and uh, it's a great day to be a fan of ohio state and all things here in the state of ohio thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you at the top go buckeyes